In this episode, I find out about the devastating booby traps that were used in the Vietnam War. I find out what these weird looking mud mounts were used for and I jump into a tiny hole underground. Hello and welcome to my Vietnam and Cambodia traveling adventure. If you're new to my videos, then well, I'm in Ho Chi Minh City now, uh, the last part of my Vietnam adventure before I go to Cambodia. If you wanna check out all the previous places that I've been in Vietnam, then I've left a car up here where you can watch them to your heart's content. But for this video, I've had to uh, split it into two parts as there's just been so much information to get through uh, because it's all on the amazing Coochie tunnels. On how the Vietnamese soldiers use these tunnels to fight not only the French, but also the American soldiers. It's specifically very well known during the Vietnam War against the Americans. Now the Vietnamese were very, very poor and they didn't have the money to buy aircrafts, guns, explosives and vehicles. So they had to make do with the environment and they were very, very smart in what they did with it. So this is gonna be a bit of a history lesson where I'm sure you're gonna learn some amazing things because upon researching all of this, I learned a lot of stuff and I'm still like blown away by, by how they pretty much won the war. Anyway, let's get to the learning. Hello and welcome to day nine. Now we've had quite the history day today so there's lots to go through so let's just get on with it. We woke up early and made it to our first destination which was the amazing Coochie Tunnels where we got to see and learn all sorts of incredible things. When walking around the Coochie Tunnel area you'll come across numerous bomb crater sites where huge B-52 bombers from the Americans would obliterate the ground which eventually towards the end of the Vietnam War would have mostly wiped out the whole tunnel system. To see these up close and personal and just to see how huge they are really is an eye-opener. There were a huge array of different and traps used it's it's actually quite scary when the gi coming step on look at it one two three yeah. 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 and the next one rolling grab you know when you falling down right in the middle on you get wounded like hamburger the what you are in a hamburger grab <laughs> look like window week yeah. and here the next one folding chair folding chair work like a crocodile jaw Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And here, fish crab. Yeah, fish. Actually, the real name, fish hook crab. I see so crab. And right here. Yeah. Why? Why? Why the door crab? It'd be above the other side of the door, so when they open, That's it right. go yeah. bam in the face. I hang him behind. Yeah. Let go. <laughs> you know, let me explain to you it's how it's work. You see? When the GI just put the force okay. step into the engine and pull it down automatically. And of course, the first three acts, GI only do, he put the hands up and the window trap. with the, his rifle. But we know him. Yeah. Oh, no more making babies. No. <laughs> Castrated. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, yeah, with a spike. Oh I thought that's what it was. Around 6,000 lives were lost just to these booby traps alone in the Vietnam War. That's around 11% of casualties, all without even firing a bullet. It's just, it's just crazy. The Vietnamese were smart in using their surroundings in the best way that they could. And it was easy and cheap to do. Dig a small hole, sharpen some bamboo sticks, cover it with leaves and... That's it, you've got yourself a trap. And if that wasn't deadly enough, they had to go one step further. If you fell down or stepped onto any one of these traps, the Vietnamese smeared all over the spikes a concoction of different poisonous plants to animal innards to even animal or human poo, which would cause serious infection to the soldier. I don't know if that's gonna cause amputation or just some serious, serious pain. And some of the traps they built made it impossible to get out of. Let's take the, uh, the, the fish trap for example that I just showed you. So we've got the spike. If once you tread onto it, you could literally lift your foot off, you, you'll have a hole in your foot, but yeah, it could be easily be done. So to get away with that, they added uh, spikes going down onto it. So let's just say this is your leg on the spike. So to prevent yourself from lifting your leg up and escaping, they added spikes going all the way down diagonally. So let's say you lift yourself up, 
and these spikes are going to go more and more deeper so there's literally there's no way of you getting yourself out without some help from your fellow soldiers for which they would have to dig the whole trap out with you still stuck in it carry you to the helicopter and get you whisked away while you try and get it surgically removed it was Ugh, unbearable. They must have been just so scared. But hey, while we're at it, let's not stop there. Let's add snake pits to their list of traps. And yes, they, they did do that. You fall into the trap and you get bitten by a very venomous snake where you're pretty much going to die in a few minutes. It was, it was that bad. But if that wasn't even more bad enough, the Vietnamese uh, carried snakes in their backpack. But why do I hear you ask? Well, not to, not for them throwing snakes. No, no, they, I don't think they did that anyway. But what they used it for was in case their backpack was ever searched by an American soldier, they'd be greeted by a very nasty surprise. I'm telling you, the Vietnamese sort of thought of everything. This is what I mean by how smart they were. They literally just thought of everything. They, they thought outside the box so much that every single area they had it covered. We then had the chance to crawl into one of the escape tunnels which were used in the war and you can see not only how hidden away it is when covered up but also how immaculately tiny it was so any big burly guys would not have had a chance to fit in here. Action! <laughs> Wait, wait, I'll rush. <laughs> wait. Hands up! Say G! No! Hands up to get out! Hands up. No, 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 no! Come here. Okay, stay down. Okay, stay down. Okay? One more, one more. Okay, only your head up. Camera here. Your head. Stop. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. Wait. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. Look very amazing. Oh, sorry, for romantic. Wait, that's okay. That's no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Stay down. Put your hand down. Hand down. Hand down. Hand down. Face up. No, no. Hand down. Face up. Face up. Let you, let you stand up. Okay. Take a picture. No, no. One back. You okay? That's right. <laughs> because you were a tall one. <laughs> Yeah, it's the Lovely. Thank you. We then learn about some of the very basic clothing that the Vietnamese wore. When they join the meeting room, they cover their face. Means that. And when they're crawling inside the tunnel, they must just sweat like me. They're very human. Third thing, when they go to Saigon River, they have shower. They need a towel. But the last one very important, sometimes the GI the boom they yes into the tunnel, how they survive. Okay, they use this one with the water to be the wet and turn to be a natural gas mask. But moreover, sometimes they got wounded. They use this to cover, to stop lifting. I bet you didn't realize how many uses there were for a simple scarf, <laughs> and it proves there's a lot. We then learn about the footwear that was used. <laughs> There's no big heavy boots here. They were too expensive. So these sexy sandals were used instead. They're very cheap to make and produce, simply made out of old bike or car tires, but also quick to repair. And there's no shortage of materials because little known fact, uh, rubber is grown on trees. I, I didn't even know that. And Vietnam grew thousands and thousands of rubber trees. They were actually like in the top five of uh, exporters in the world uh, at, at that time. I don't know what they are now, but uh, yeah, so they were never short of rubber. The sandals were also very, practical. You see they're very easy and quick to put on but with no detriment to the foot when walking because they were so thick and literally could last years and they're surprisingly quite comfortable too. You can walk, you can run, you can grip, you can climb, you can even swim in them without them falling off. Secondly rubber sandals are actually quite practical for jungle use because one of the main problems with a tropical jungle is water and humidity. Because if you're operating in boggy terrain, scavenging in tunnels and making frequent water crossings, then whatever you do, your feet are going to get rather wet. And if you're wearing sandals, then at least your feet have a chance to dry out. And having permanently wet feet is very bad news for a soldier. Also, leather boots rot extremely quickly, so the common disease trench foot was never really an issue. Well, not to my knowledge anyway. <laughs> also, another clever fact for you, the Vietnamese soldiers wore their sandals back 
backwards. Why the hell would they do that? I hear you ask. It's very simple and very clever, as 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 I keep saying. Uh, they wore them backwards in case the American soldiers were following their footprints, which obviously would follow them in the completely the opposite direction. So clever. Oh, so clever. So simple, but yet again, genius. Oh, and they were made for adults and children as well. Ah. Oh. How cute. You could also buy the sandals here as well, but I don't know, they're, they're not really my type. I'm gonna leave the video on something even more fascinating to hear, and yet, once again, I'm gonna repeat myself, even more intelligent ideas from the Vietnamese. You see, everywhere you walk across the Kuchi tunnels, you keep coming across these huge mud mounts on the ground. These are a very ingenious way the Vietnamese came up with on how to breathe underground. You see, they built these to look like termite mounts to lure the American soldiers away. Also, furthermore, they shoved large bamboo sticks into these which penetrated deep underground to provide air circulation which enabled them to breathe. And if that wasn't clever enough, uh, American soldiers began using German shepherd dogs, trained to use their keen sense of smell to find and locate the Vietnamese. However, they were unsuccessful because the Vietnamese covered these mounts and the bamboo sticks with chili powder and black pepper and all sorts of other ingredients to make the dogs not be able to pick up their scent and would make them stop smelling the area because, well, if you're sniffing chili powder up, it's, it's gonna make anyone run a mile. So really simple things but really effective. Or to go one step even more cleverer, the Vietnamese would cover these mounts with stolen belongings from the American soldiers. Things such as um, soap, bits of uniform, any other kind of personal belongings which would confuse the dogs when smelling the area because they'd be thinking well th this is this is a friendly here, this isn't a Vietnamese soldier so they'd just simply just move away. But ha that is just so smart and not only would they cover the mounts with uh, American soap, they would wash themselves in it as well. So, you know, the, the, the scent would rise up and they'd think it's American soap, so it's another threat. Like, uh, I can't I can't get over how clever they, they were, and I don't know if they still are now, but just during that time, right, this is what I said, they, they used the environment so well and they just had skills in every single area. They just made such simple things. They're, they're tool to winning the war, really. I, they're unbelievable. You've literally got to give them credit on just how smart they were. But if you thought you learned some fascinating stuff in this video, then you're gonna to wanna to wait for part two because there's certainly more to come. And also you get to see what life was actually like traveling through the tunnels because I personally got to do it myself. It was a lot of fun, but yeah, you just, wait, just wait for the video. But thank you for watching part one. Hopefully you did like it. Um, I put a lot of effort into this video uh, as well as a hell of a lot of research I did for it as well. If you did like it, then please just show us some love, either commenting down below or liking the video or even subscribing to keep up with the rest of my traveling adventure. Anyway, guys, thanks again and I will see you all in part two. Don't miss it. Okay, bye-bye.